Hello, my friends. Good evening. Yes, that's the moon you're looking at through the clouds, for what it's worth. I'm out in the front yard here. My home. My humble home here in uh, Vancouver, Washington. I'm looking at the moon shadow. Cast on the grass here. It's just a... <laughs> reminds me of that... Uh, Moon Shadow. I believe it was Cat Stevens, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Man, that takes me back. I used to play a lot of the Cat Stevens acoustic songs. And uh, him and Jim Croce and <laughs> Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young and all the others. I loved playing guitar, especially acoustic guitar. And I still do, but it's just been a while and I used to practice a hell of a lot more than I do now, maybe once a year now. But uh, anyhow, that's this video is just something I wanted to just say about being yourself. And I was thinking about this earlier, you know, and I actually was just talking with my wife before I came outside here, and I was saying how grateful I am for all the thing that I've, things that I've learned in my life and the way that I've grown in my life. And I said, you remember a few years ago when, you know, I first started doing YouTube and, you know, I'd get trolled by somebody and it would bother me and I'd be thinking about it for like a week or longer. And I just it just seems so preposterous now that anyone could get under my skin by saying anything. I mean, I, I've heard it all. I've had people making videos about me being a reptilian and saying things about my family and kids, threatening my life, I mean, anything you can imagine through the years. And these days I take it with a grain of salt, you know. Basically, if that's your attitude, fuck you. You know, I don't care. But uh, that's not always been the case. And I realize I've always had the fuck you attitude, but it's not, you know, it hasn't always been something that, I guess, five years ago, let's say, I might not admit that something got under my skin and was bothering me. And so I realized that the only enemy is me if I'm going to be frustrated about something somebody else said or did. And part of being authentic for me is being honest with myself. And so I'm making this video about being authentic and in a way, for me, that means being honest with yourself more than it means <laughs> how you are with others. Let's just put it that way. When people say authentic, say, oh, this person's very authentic. You might think that it means that they're honest with others, that they show their true colors and say what they mean and mean what they say. And that would be true. But I'd also like to say that if we're expressing all of our honest sides to everyone else, but we're omitting certain factors that we know about ourselves, for example, and let me give you an example that let's say that a person gets a lot of praise from everyone and, and uh, they're very kind back in return uh, but everything's a misguided belief that the person is kind when in fact they're really a jerk behind closed doors and the person knows this but uh, let's just say that they tend to uh, hide it or ignore it you know for themselves and only the individual knows when they are so I'm going to sit down in the hammock here <laughs> Only the individual knows when they are uh, deluding themselves or deluding others. And most of the time, it's not really worth the effort to try to prove that someone else is wrong about something unless it's something that affects us directly as individuals. So, for example, if somebody wants to say that the sky is purple, you know, or that, you know, grass is pink, uh, they can argue that all day long and most people won't go along with it. Um, when it gets into something a little deeper, say like whether the earth is flat or whether the moon is real, well then people might tend to bite into the argument just for the sake of clearing the air. But when it gets to a person poking and prodding and harassing an, a person about who they are, when the person's completely wrong and not understanding, that's when a person needs to walk away. And I'm just saying that because I know a lot of folks out there are easily bothered by trolls and bullies. And uh, I've always thought of myself as a pretty strong person, but I'll tell you, you know, when I think back to school, I was picked on all the time. You know, when I got to my sixth grade, 
school halfway through the year. I had to switch schools. My parents divorced and we moved and I got there and these, you know, the, the school bully, somebody came up to me like the first or second day and they said, oh, so-and-so uh, says he wants to kick your ass. And I'm like, what? Who's that? And they're like, oh, he's the school bully. And I was like, great. <laughs> I just get to the school and this guy wants to fuck with me. You know, and that, but then uh, in, in retrospect, realizing this, that this person suffered Maybe his dad was an asshole. You know, maybe he never had enough love. And honestly, I hate to say it, it comes down to daddy issues, but you can tell a lot about a person by their behavior, whether they have mom or dad issues. Um, but it's not always accurate. But generally, when a person wants to uh, go around fighting and beating up people for no reason, it basically means one of two things. Either their dad wasn't there to teach them any better, or their dad is a complete fucking asshole himself and taught them to fight everybody. Either way here we are stuck with ourselves and I've spent the first few minutes you know and not really getting to what I mean by authentic but I think that was a prerequisite all of that being authentic being honest and being true is something that some people take to be as almost an arrogant personality trait in other words being authentic to them means that well I'm true and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't lie to myself. And in fact, this is even used by some people who are, let's say, more in the materialistic mindset to dismiss those who have a religious mindset where maybe they believe in things they can't prove. And a person would say, you know, oh, that's not authentic. You're not being honest with yourself. And I don't think that's fair. I think that that's a point we need to remember that being authentic to yourself doesn't always mean that everything that you believe you can prove and that you have answers for everything you know that you discuss it's I think that what it really means is that you embrace the questions of life with vigor with excitement and with open-minded honesty you don't discount something because it doesn't agree with your preconceived notions or your current paradigm and that ultimately, if you ask anything, you want the answers for one reason and one reason only. To help yourself and others live better. Because having knowledge for knowledge's sake, that's great. It's, but to me, it's like taking philosophy in college. It's kind of a joke. You can go and learn about what other philosophers talked about. You can study philosophy. But the idea of philosophy itself is just love of wisdom. When it's put into a context of a classroom, uh, much silliness occurs and a lot is lost. But I feel the same way about just being honest and what I'm saying as authentic, I guess, is just, it's not something that is a category. It's not something that you fit into like you're one of the cool guys because you're honest with yourself. But to realize a lot, all of us are lying to ourselves one way or another. And and, and that honesty of facing that is what can help us grow the most. And ultimately, we find that much of the time, the growth that occurs just goes unnoticed by ourselves. Now, it may be noticed by others, but while I'm on that note, let me tell you something I've noticed about those around us that we've known all our lives. When you talk about somebody meeting somebody for the first time and having that, you know, initial, <laughs> you know, first impression, uh, that that extends to our friends as well. You know, if if you were a certain way with your friends when you were younger, for example, maybe you were the the, the clown or uh, there was something about you that you were always known as. It's really hard to break away from that. And for me, I've always been a fairly arrogant and, you know, this is what I want to do type attitude maybe when I was younger, and I'm not that way anymore. I'm actually rather indecisive and never sure quite what I want to do, but still that image of my arrogance probably carries over in some of the things I say to my friends and family when they take it the wrong way, just because of the type of person I am. Um, and so I realize that I do probably do that with others too, so I try not to. And each time I see a friend that I haven't seen before, instead of saying, well, maybe this person's changed, I say maybe they're just more authentic than they ever were. Maybe they're being the true selves that they always wanted to be. You know, <laughs> I say when a person's drunk, <laughs> they're more of their authentic self. And 
you know, I, I don't believe that necessarily, but I believe it somewhat in, in the sense that, uh, you know, I know that there's angry drunks and there's happy drunks. And it seems that a person's inner inhibitions are lowered and, and they tend to act more on their, you know, raw core personality, you know. And uh, I think all of us can learn a little bit of ourselves, not by our drunk selves, but by our angry selves or our sad selves and acknowledging when we feel a certain way and being honest about it. So if I could leave with the note, I would just say to really, you know, I'm not a teacher, and that's why I try to say, you know, I, I sometimes want to say, this is what you should do, but I, I definitely avoid that at all costs in my videos. I don't, and it's something that probably, you know, people don't notice as much, but I never say this is what you should do or this is how you should do this. It's 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 like so subjective each individual in the way that they embrace life, and I really really hate it when people say that this is the answer or this is the truth. You know, I I despise these new age bullshit gurus who tell everybody to just live in the now and to live in love and light and peace and rainbows and all that hokey crap. You know, I went down that road for a while. It's all bullshit. You know, you have to face reality. I'm not saying there's no peace and love and communion because that's the reality I want to live in. And when I spend time with people, I, you know, revel in the beauty and glory of existence in life. But I don't sugarcoat it. It can be dirty. It can be hard to be alive. And, and we have to deal with the light and the darkness, the yin and the yang. Just remember that they're intertwined and there's a little of each in each. <laughs> I like to know that I'm a flawed human, but that that very nature that we're all flawed is what makes us perfect. We're just doing what we do. We try to overthink it sometimes, but really life is about those moments of, like right now, I'm laying here, I'm talking to the camera, but I'm staring at the moon, and the clouds are going over the moon, and it's just absolutely beautiful just thinking about the vastness of it all and, <laughs> you know, it, if we were to be true <laughs> to ourselves all the time, you know, a lot could be learned, but it's something that we have to practice. And uh, sometimes being true to us means we have to let go of maybe what we want to do for a while and do what needs to be done. Anyhow, um, before I start rambling too much longer, I'm going to head out. So, I wish you all the best and have a wonderful night.